Hello there. Welcome to the the Comics Corner with Mike and Johnny. Uh, we're here again uh, talking to you uh, this time not about book club, although we'll probably touch on that again. But uh, for today, we're going to be talking about uh, a bit of kind of what's been going on here. Uh, and then I guess as in the comics industry as a whole. Um, so yeah, any, anything uh, coming to mind offhand, Johnny, for you? Uh, well, from what I read online, you know, there's a lot of clickbait out there, but I, I tried to stick with the good resources that I know of. Yeah. So I did see an article stating that there are actually solicits for the books that Marvel's going to be releasing in mid-May. So that was encouraging. Yeah. Um, so it is looking, at least from what I've heard, like Diamond's going to try to start shipping mid-May. Yeah, for right now, um, the last thing that we got on like the Diamond Retail End uh, website, like they've been posting articles there, um, you know, all about the, you know, the way in which coronavirus has been affecting the industry, um, including themselves and, you know, smaller stores like us. But um, right now, the last update that we got was um, that their target uh, on sale date is May 20th. Um, so last last week, like late last week, um, early this week, um, we got the FOC order, final order cutoff is what that stands for. It's basically like the rule of thumb usually is any book that's hitting like um, that has a street date, like let's say, um, you know, of the 20th, usually about roughly two weeks, sometimes three weeks before then is when stores like us put in the FOC, which is the last time that we can kind of adjust our numbers to ensure that, you know, that amount will come in on that street date. Uh, so we, that was something that they basically turned off for a while since they had, you know, shut off all their distribution. But uh, the last time that we had it was, uh, uh, we had it uh, this last week. So they're right now currently trying to shoot for um, May 20th, but we'll, you know, see how that, <laughs> how that shakes out. Um, From the information you've gotten, have you seen anything about uh, DC sending their books out? Because I thought there were some like uh, problems with them and Diamond because they tried going through other distributor distributors during this uh, break period. Yeah, so that was that was one of the other big uh, news things too. Overall, this was uh, DC was trying to kind of you know go around or go above Diamond uh, by meeting their (laughs) own uh, means of distribution. Uh, They had uh, Lunar. And uh, I forget the other name of the distributor, but the thing is... Was it Penguin House d- directly from them? No, no. So it, these ones were like just names that should be unfamiliar because they okay. basically just made those uh, those distribution accounts like a few days before they announced that. Um, and then as, as time went on, it was found out that those distribution companies were basically two large comic book retailers. So one of them was uh, Midtown Comics, uh, another one was um, C- CBDS, I think it was, uh, comic book. Oh, DCBS. Yeah, yeah, there we go, yeah. yeah. Discount um, comic book services, that's Exactly, right. yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. basically like um, an East Coast and a West Coast, like uh, the larger uh, distributors or larger uh, comic book retailer stores there basically were stepping up to also do some distribution in those regions. Um, so that was a possibility for people to get uh, certain DC books. Now it was only a handful of books because they're basically doing it as a trial run. Um, we kind of opted out to that because you know we were, you know, taking things kind of as they go. You know, it was a handful of books. You know, does it make sense to you know uh, make an account, have a whole new distribution uh, chain? You know, like right. have to like basically redo our entire <laughs> orders. Um, so we kind of you know didn't really hop on that train uh certain stores did certain stores didn't you know um for some people they felt it was a little bit of a conflict of interest you know if you're you know a a comic book retail store and now you're paying another comic book store to basically do the deliveries for you uh it feels a little bit weird um and of course people have yeah sorry go ahead no so was there even an option I, I don't know. I'm asking generally, like, was there even an option to order the DC books in that FOC, the other uh, most recent one, or was it Yes. Not yeah. So um, the one that okay. I just finished up, I had a handful. Um, it was mostly some DC books, um, a couple like indie titles here and there. Um, but yeah, for right now, uh, they had like a special FOC thing just for certain um, DC books. And it wasn't even the full set that I had previously done. Um, they had removed okay. some and kind of shuffled it around, but a lot of those were the ones that were also like, um, just this last week um coming to stores that that went through those uh secondary distributions um 
So as far as you've heard about like release dates, are they just starting everything the 20th? As yeah, if it for right now, for right now it seems like, yeah, like everything was okay. just kind of pushed back a few weeks. Um, they're okay. going to kind of trickle certain books out, maybe increase the amount that comes out in certain days, um, just because, you know, in theory, I guess they want to catch up to, you know, where their books are. But I know that Marvel also was saying that uh, when they start again, they might be, you know, cutting certain titles, um, sure. which, you know, can't in a lot of cases like that's something that you know could kind of stand to happen anyway like uh especially with marvel i feel like there's a lot of just kind of getting a bunch of books out there um you know just trying to always have a bunch of new titles number ones out on the shelves without really thinking about you know how many are currently out there so right you know it's a lot of um we've talked many times like the x books and i love x-men yeah they're, there's just way too many titles right now man like it's ridiculous so if they if this causes them to drop a few, I, I think that would be for the better. Yeah, yeah. Like there's certain times like that where you know, if, it's like if somebody, they've always, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because like if if you like X Men titles, you know, and there's like you know like maybe two or three titles out there, like yeah, it's not that bad. You know, like I could follow with that. But then as they expand, right. you know, like more and more, and sure they drop some off here and there, but it's you know very Hydra esque. You know, maybe it's a fitting metaphor that you know like it's like once one title comes down, you know, like two more pop up in its place. So. Uh, yeah, you know, in, in some ways, maybe this is kind of giving them time to kind of pause and reflect and see what is, what are the kind of like the more necessary titles and what are them, you know, which ones are just kind of, I don't know, in some ways just kind of padding out their numbers. So. Um, and then I, I do have an update for uh, collected editions because that's kind of my special yeah. part. So um, I do know for a fact Marvel had uh, officially this week, they cut the release dates for all of the epic collections co complete collections and omnibuses for june and july and push them all to yeah. november so like that's a like for someone like me that collects those it's gonna be easier on my wallet for the next few months which is nice but yeah like man there's not gonna be anything new for me to buy for a, a couple of months i mean that that's pretty harsh considering i'm used to buying something yeah damn near every week you know so. yeah yeah i mean a lot of the stuff um <laughs> is just basically kind of like trying to restart in early early september or yeah like in, in that case you know like early fall um or sorry early summer um or early fall um like for example another thing um uh is the free comic book day normally that's oh, the first yeah. saturday in may sure. um, and we're, yeah. we're coming up on that pretty quick but uh right now that's kind of the last I heard it was sometime in august was what they were shooting for um okay. so it's kind of indefinitely you know push back a little bit uh but right now it's just kind of seeing where that lands like um the last time uh we got a shipment which was uh march 25th that was like the last like new comic book week for stores um right. in that shipment uh they had started um pushing out some of the free comic book day titles but you know they don't put them all out at once um just because you know as publishers are kind of finishing up printing and you know they're getting the final numbers but they try to get you know in stores a, a bit ahead of time so like we could you know sort them out you know we can kind of count what we've got and you know set up for the big events but you know since this kind of came up it's kind of a question mark as to when it's actually going to be and you know like when we're going to start getting them again so it's it'll be interesting right. to see how like you know something like free comic book day which is you know like one of the few like you know comic book holidays i guess you could call it that there are like that are kind of yeah uh more like national yeah, and you know, I would really, I'd be bummed out if they did, like, curbside pickup for, like, free comic book things. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm cool, like, if they start pumping out regular titles and we have to get those distributed, however, I'm cool yeah, with that. Yeah, definitely, like, but, like, yeah. Free I mean, comic book day is about getting people into the local comic shops. Like, that, that spirit of it has to be there. So even if they have to push it off, I support that rather than pumping the books out for free and, like, sending them to people. Yeah, definitely, because... Even though, even though it is a fun event, like at the end of the day, like a lot of a lot of stories, you know, it's basically like you said, just kind of like a way in which to advertise and to get people in the store because you know, like they're coming in, they're looking at you know, like the selection of free comics, and while they're there, they might you know grab something else or you know sign up to become a subscriber, which is you know usually been the case for us. Like after free comic book day and to a lesser extent, um, Halloween comic fest, you know, we see you know spikes in in our sales and then also uh, the amount of subscribers that we get because for some people, you know, like they've been out of comics for a while and you know what better time to, you know to hop back in or at least see kind of what's on offer than the free comic book day stuff um 
so for, that's, you know, we'll see kind of what that leads to for us, but, um, you know, and, and just stores in general, but uh, yeah, we're just going to have to kind of <laughs> see where that goes. Yeah. I mean, and I think I've said this before, but until like we get definitive uh, announcements and statements from like Diamond or Marvel or DC, everything's up in the air and guesswork. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of been one of the, the, uh, the themes in this too is Marvel has been kind of quiet on their front. Um, like a lot of the news has been coming out around, you know, DC because, you know, they've been trying to like, to my knowledge, I don't think they've necessarily like shut down or had to like, um, you know, furlough that many writers or, or artists or like just even employees because uh, they've been trying to, you know, do this distribution method. So that's been able to have them reach, you know, stores and, and, you know, still have people able to, kind of meet their deadlines but uh marvel on the other hand to my knowledge like they've had to you know tell writers to you know stop same with their artists and you know like furloughed a lot of like in-house employees too uh, oh, yeah. because they haven't had a means to distribute like uh like dc has so i saw they furloughed i think it was like twenty six thousand employees or something like yeah. that that's insane and uh the pencils down i know idw did pencils down like the first week this stuff was happening so yeah 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 obviously yeah, the, the smaller indie companies like that you know it's, it's hit them a little bit harder because you know they don't really have you know the means to kind of set up like you know in the way that dc is trying to you know go around right. that but um and you know with yeah. marvel as much as i would love them to make an announcement and say like this is what go what's going on this is the plan i think their silence says that they don't even know and that's why they're <laughs> yeah. saying anything, which is fair i mean nobody knows right now so like comic books are really not high in the priority list unfortunately even though we want them yeah to be, i mean yeah i mean definitely know? obviously for marvel um you know between like being how big that it is and you know having disney and stuff like that like obviously they're able to kind of coast a bit more or you know like you know the comics being down for a few months isn't as big of a hit obviously as it is for maybe somebody like dc or even um you know obviously the indie companies where that's kind of all they've got right but uh but yeah it's still kind of interesting to see how they've been you know kind of silent and very passive during all this i agree so uh yeah hopefully we hear from something from them one way or another <laughs> yeah definitely um uh but yeah like like we've said you know like it's just kind of even on our end kind of waiting and seeing like uh like, like we said last we heard was uh, may 20th uh for diamonds so we'll see um what the state of things are like by then uh sure. hopefully by then um and honestly hopefully either later in the week or early next week um uh since governor prisker had the he extended the the stay at home uh uh act stuff till like uh late may uh i believe it was but as like a yeah. caveat he's he's announced that non-essential stores are able to kind of branch back out into doing things like curbside uh, which was something that we were doing at the, the very start of this, but then, you know, things kind of <laughs> escalated pretty quickly and, you know, right. uh, things changed basically overnight for a lot of stores. So uh, we had to put, you know, uh, a hold on that, but um, either later in this week or early next week, we'll have more information on what we're going to be trying to do for that. Um, you know, we're definitely looking into uh, obviously keeping safe and, you know, doing what we can with these restrictions. Um, that's, right. that's best for everybody, but uh, we are also going to be looking into that option of of how we will be able to do things like uh, curbside. So uh, as we get more information on that, I'd say check out, you know, the Facebook page. Um, if if we get more final details, I'll be shooting out another uh, email if you're a comic book subscriber. Uh, so we'll have that kind of information out there. But um, but yeah, we're just going to kind of be, you know, taking it as it comes. And, and like I said, as we get more information, we'll post it here too. Definitely. Yeah. So everybody check back for those updates. Like he said, very good. And uh, it'll be, it'll be really exciting. I think that first week when we have new stuff for the you know first time. And I mean, it'll be almost two months at that point. That's going to be a really exciting day for yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just nice to, you know, get to get back into the swing of that um, and to have, you know, new stuff uh, to, to show okay. off and, and, you know, even just talk about, um, because I think uh, as we mentioned too, like uh, once we start getting new comics, I think, uh if we're still doing these stream things like that um one of the things we want to talk about is you know like maybe you know hey here's what we're looking forward to this week or here's you know kind of what we've been reading and kind of catching up along with you guys too so it'll you know give us more things to talk about because you know we just like reading comics and talking about them so that'll definitely give us a lot more to, to do when we actually have you know <laughs> new comics to talk about so yeah absolutely and uh 
you know, hopefully too, then if we're doing the curbside pickup, we can offer up, um, you know, the books that we're reading for our book club. If we're doing the classics, we can, you know, start pumping those out a little more. Oh yeah, know, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause right now, I mean, no one could have bought year one from us last week and that kind of sucks but yeah. well to be fair you, you still can if you want to uh we could we could still ship like that's um you know that's, right. that's that's been one of the things that we've been doing during all this was uh was shipping things out um whether it's you know comic books uh trades um and then obviously to a, a different degree our board game and uh like our you know large trading game uh singles collections like we've been uh constantly shipping stuff out to my knowledge like it's honestly been quite a spike in that kind of stuff since like you know more so than when the store is actually open which obviously that makes sense you know people are kind of staying home they you know like have time to, to you know kind of like look at their collections you know new sets have been coming out for like all the major games so they want to you know keep keep up to date with that stuff um so yeah it's, it's been kind of interesting to see how like you know as certain departments go down other ones go up and you know just what all this has meant for us so it plus i don't know about you but i love getting packages in the mail so even yeah. if i bought it for myself like it's so rewarding for no reason to come home and be like yes i have something to open it's like yeah. christmas except you know there's something good inside because yeah definitely it. i i've been uh, uh taking a lot of this time to uh <laughs> all this free time means more time for me to just like look around at my collection and like look around at ebay and be like oh that would that would finish out this you know this run that i have or this collection so yeah like <laughs> every few days I get home and there's you know like these big eBay packages waiting for me with comics or, or trades and stuff like that and just fun stuff and yeah like uh, uh it is like a, a mini Christmas you know like every every few days of the week just you know coming home and just seeing a, a stack of Amazon packages too so yeah uh, so yeah, yeah you know like, pastimes packages you yeah know? exactly yeah yeah we've 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 sh uh, shipped a lot out to our subscribers um I, I messaged that um you know, if you, if you have a pull box here, that's uh, one of the things that we can do is ship it out to you. Um, and I also sent out an email um, asking for uh, to update our, our our records with um, addresses because we we're also going to be shipping out like uh, a little like thank you gift um, to the people you know uh, that have you know sent that to us. You know, because it's it's really meant a lot. You know, because again, you know, it gives us uh, a way to have some you know some income uh, for the store and also you know like. A good time for them to catch up because you know since no new books have been coming in you know whatever the box for the subscriptions is is kind of where they're at for that so it's a good way to uh, to finally catch up on that stuff too so yeah actually that's been the biggest benefit for me is like all this stuff that i had on hold that i wanted to get later well now i can get it because there's nothing <laughs> exactly, so, yeah. yeah i can um, always find a way to spend money on comics even in yeah. the corner you know? Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I, I've just been kind of spreading out my collection on our uh, our living room floor and just like laying out like, you know, a bunch of long boxes and, you know, just resorting things out, bagging and boarding them. So, so yeah, it's, it's been good time for me to, you know, catch up on that. Uh, I keep, I keep feeling like I'm, de I definitely have more comics than I'll ever have time to read, but you know, it's, it's still fun to collect them and, you know, have that stuff. Uh, Cause again, you know, like a lot of that stuff could come back uh, later as, you know, like our different suggestions uh, for the week. So. So you've been bagging and boarding your comics at home? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or at least like the, a lot of the more expensive ones. There's certain ones like um, I get a lot of the uh, uh, the dollar comics. Like uh, Marvel has the line of True Believers. Uh, DC has like their their DC dollar books. Um, They're so uh, like sweet. I love image. Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like stuff like that where it's, um, you know, kind of gives you, it's usually a, like if it's a, a big series, like for the Marvel stuff, like, um, you know, a storyline, if you know, like, hey, here's, you know, the, the symbiote spider suit, or like, here's, you know, like Venom's first big storyline, it'll usually be like the number one uh, issue of that storyline. So it's, it's seen as like a, a way to kind of sample that storyline. And, you know, also just the fact that like, all those stories really run the gamut. Um, again, you know, mainly looking at the, the Marvel ones, because they definitely have the larger uh, library of those. Uh, yeah. but you know, they run the gamut from like all the way from like the sixties, you know, to stuff that was coming out like, you know, two, three years ago. So it's a way for you to, to kind of, you know, sample these big storylines. Out of all the uh, expensive books you were bagging and boarding, what's the coolest one you got? What's the coolest thing you saw in the last week that you're like, man, I got this. Um, this awesome. I'm glad. I yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think I have that many crazy, like super expensive ones. Um, I know I have some uh, some Doctor Strange ones, not like any crazy like first appearance or anything like that. Um, I got some Green Lantern stuff too. Like I'm oh. weird. A lot of the times, like if it's kind of like an iconic cover or stuff that I like, um, 
I'll get it. Like like Green Lantern wise, I rem- I was reminded that I have the one where it's like him, like with like uh, uh the rings on every hand, like of the uh um, the parallax storyline. What was that like Green Lantern forty nine or something like that? Um, okay. But yeah, yeah, just just stuff like that where I just kind of um you know I don't have a crazy expensive collection, but I just kind of you know like uh if it's ones that I've read before, you know like I'm sure you know like if I read it in a trade paperback, I'm like oh that was a cool single issue, so like I'll grab you know that one as just something to kind of to have so. Okay, cool, nice. How about you? Are you more of a, a value uh, collector or? No, I I hate that because <laughs> I have a lot of, co- like I'm looking at my collection right now, it's like uh-huh. behind the camera. So like I've got a lot of my books framed and like a few of them are like really cheap, like $3, like a 1980 oh, yeah, yeah. book or something. But like if the cover's cool, I don't care if it's a, if it's a, fir- a first appearance or a key issue, I, I want it on display. And yeah, definitely. On the opposite side, like, I don't care if it's a first appearance of somebody just because it's expensive doesn't mean I need to have it. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, okay, Avengers number one, like a 1963 Avengers number one. I think that cover is like super ugly. I'm not a big fan of the old Jack Kirby art. I know yeah, that's yeah. But sure, like, sure. Like, yeah, it's cool. It's Avengers one, but like, I would never have the desire to pay thousands of dollars to own that it doesn't look that cool sure um yeah like that's, that's definitely one of the things too is um you know it kind of comes down to is it something that you uh you know like if you have like a nostalgia for that you know like obviously right. we weren't you know alive or around during that kind of stuff so like maybe we kind yeah. of like lean towards like silver or you know like uh, more like bronze and modern age stuff um i, but I just, do have a, um, yeah. I have a giant size x-men number one yeah and that's like but it's but it's x-men and it's a cool cover i was like well <laughs> can't curl with that yeah yeah i know it's expensive but i need it so i got it uh i was just, i was just thinking too now of of stuff that i've recently just bought um uh, i just started getting into uh judge dread stuff um so like yeah. looking into uh what was it the, the british uh kind of anthology magazine uh 2000 ad um okay that's where, you know, like Judge Dredd and a bunch of other like uh, smaller characters kind of started from uh, like Rogue Trooper and uh, a few other ones. But um, I was looking at just kind of Judge Dredd storylines. Like I've, I've grabbed a lot of like the trade paperbacks and like the early, like, uh, you know, the magazine issues, uh, they call them uh, Prague's programs. Like, you know, like uh, here's, you know, like the, you know, this week's program of yeah. Judge Dredd. Um, and there was a uh, apparently a band storyline uh, which featured um, it was basically I think it was called like the fast food wars or something like that where it was basically like uh, in Mega City One which is where Judge Dredd is there's a bunch of these these gangs and stuff that are kind of running around uh, and a lot of them are modeled after like um, they're usually parody stuff but there was one that was modeled after like all of the fast food mascots so it was banned because they had like a uh, Ronald McDonald's um, uh, figure and like the Burger King was there too so there was a lot of stuff like that that caused uh, a lot of problems back then so a little controversy mm-hmm. okay but that, that uh, was expensive but also that was shipping from uh from Britain so I think that was part of it but, but yeah that's well that's cool mm-hmm. so the magazine ones are they like oversized magazine size or yeah yeah like it's, it's it, no it, it's proper like magazine like it was you know like a, a monthly i want to say uh periodical and it's it's still going on now but like you know like they were starting in like the i want to say like um early 60s i think was uh i think when 2080 started i forget but, but yeah like they, they definitely go back so oh wow that's pretty old okay mm-hmm. yeah that's legit nice yeah so I, I i usually look for weird stuff like that but no, that's cool. Uh, I maybe I'll check out Judge Dredd. It's, it's cool. You like it? It's like, it's- yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's it's a thing of like I feel like the majority of people, um, their exposure to Judge Dredd is obviously like uh, the Sylvester Stallone movie, um, and maybe to a, a lesser degree the um, what was it, 2014 or 15 uh, one just titled Dredd. I forget the main actor's yeah. name, but uh, Carl Urban. Yeah, Carl Urban. Yeah, like that one was actually pretty solid. Um, was it? I didn't see it. It was cool. I, I liked it a lot. It was a lot more straightforward or kind of like um that one is also based off a um a, a block war uh series. Um but the uh the classic Stallone uh Judge Dredd, it's it's very campy, you know, like it, it has an appeal for certain people. For me, it's I kind of roll my eyes at it, but um mm-hmm. but yeah, for a lot of people like that's that's their exposure to Judge Dredd is just Sylvester Stallone, like, you know, 
slurring and yelling i am the law um but yeah i mean a special spot in my heart for sly but it's probably not that great yeah yeah exactly but you know it, that, that still uh captured a lot of the feel uh rolling back around to our um batman year one and um uh, Watchmen themes of a lot oh, of uh, yeah. like civil and like um, urban unrest you know like that's that's one of the you know the huge themes of uh, Judge Dredd uh, the series is usually like this you know it's at a time in human history where I think like uh, like Russia and U.S. like nuked each other so it's like the majority of the U.S. is like this barren wasteland um, they call okay. it like the cursed earth um, there's some apocalypse apocalyptic event that happened um leaving you know like the majority of the u.s like you know just burned out uh so uh societies have kind of like merged and gathered into like these what they call mega cities so there's mega city one that's like uh basically like in the new york um uh east coast region that's you know like you know million hundreds of millions of people you know it, you know tightly packed in a city so it's it's you know like mile high skyscrapers that are like apartment complexes that are basically like tenements so it's like a lot of just like dirty uh uh urban fears and stuff like that so it definitely feeds into kind of a lot of the stuff that we were getting in uh uh watchmen and and year one so well i definitely am interested now just for that reason so you yeah probably... thanks exactly john yeah welcome to our judge dread hour <laughs> Although I guess um, as as kind of a uh, a little bit of a lead in, um, we are looking into um, uh, part of the reason that we got so deep into Judge Dredd was um, me and a coworker uh, Davis. Uh, we were looking at um, a bunch of Judge Dredd like uh, board games and RPG yeah. stuff, and as such, uh, we invested in getting. Um, uh, there's a Judge Dread RPG that came out, I think it was either like late last year or early this year. Um, I think it was it started off as a Kickstarter, and we got. Um, uh, it has basically like a player's handbook, a dungeon master guide, um, and a few uh, adventures. So we <laughs> we we took a look at that and we started rolling characters. So we've um, that's something that we're probably going to be doing uh, hopefully soon on the streams is uh, yeah. some Judge Dread uh, 2000 AD uh, real play videos. So uh, well, I definitely need the background. Then I need the, I need the history. I need yeah, to yeah. I mean, like that's that was that was definitely part of it was kind of like looking into um, you know. Uh, a lot of the characters because there's different things like uh for you know spoilers we may or may not be uh playing as uh talking uh apes like in that universe like um uh species like um chimpanzees orangutans gorillas like were like uh science experiments and like on, it was done on the moon or something like that so it's a lot of crazy stuff but like they like right. you know, gained they gained like uh more sentience and uh, uh a higher level of intellect so it's like right. they're able to talk and they're like they're members of society and like they even have like uh, their own like areas in which they live uh they like they call it like uh the jungle is like their kind of like domain in mega city one so it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of weird stuff like that uh but i don't know it definitely appeals to me and yeah um this is uh, judge you, dread stuff? yeah and yeah oh yeah like judge dread like this thing is it goes deep it's not just you know dudes on motorcycles although um as part of this too you can be a judge like that's uh what we're playing as is almost there's like civilian classes um there's uh like perps they call them like the criminal classes um where you can kind of like play as bad guys or like if you want to play as a judge that's like a whole other class like with whole other like abilities and background stuff because like as you're making your character you're kind of like simulating like uh your time in like the academy and like the different areas in which you kind of focused on so it's like you know like maybe you're really good at driving or maybe you're really good at you know shooting guns or like uh there's a lot of crazy stuff like there is a um i forget what they call it but they have a a section of the judges which are like they deal with the supernatural uh i think they're called like um shoot like they're called like exorcism judges or something like that where they deal with like uh all of like the supernatural elements of of mega city one so yeah if you want to be like battling ghosts and, and stuff like that you could you could definitely do that so and this is all in the rpg yeah yeah that's that's all like you know stuff that they basically have you know as as options for you so so i'd say you know definitely check back in soon as we get more information on uh <laughs> when we start playing that so yeah it sounds um, pretty fun okay so uh, but yeah comic books uh there's a lot of crazy stuff in <laughs> yeah wow so eventually we can we can stream judge dread we can sell the RPG books and we can sell the comic books. And, yeah, and yeah we'll, we'll be all over the place. Yeah, like um, we definitely have, um, like I said, there's um, 
uh, the 2000 AD like magazine bundles that um, Diamond Comics usually distributes. Um, that's like a lot of the current stuff. It's a bummer. Uh, a lot of like the older stuff, like um, Dave's now we're looking into like the the omnibuses, kind of like how you have like the epic collections and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the early stuff is is kind of out of print, which is a bummer because oh, like, it, it seems or or like. Uh, like I said, a lot of 2080 stuff, there was uh, characters like um, Rogue Trooper and uh, Nikolai Dante, which were like okay. these side characters in those stories. But like a lot of those like came out, you know, like five, 10 years ago and they just kind of like never reprinted them, which, you know, obviously like they're kind of like lesser known characters, but you know, right. it just means that you're kind of hunting on uh, on eBay like we have been for like, you know, trying to fill out those collections. But uh, but yeah, there's there's still a, a ton of, of content like that that's out there, so. Like uh, one of the last weeks before um, uh, New Comics stopped, they had a Judge Dread 100-page uh, uh, giant, which was like you know like the usual yes. kind of like here's like a, a handful of like little like short stories and anthology story type stuff. So I know we've got oh, a few of those. Left, so okay, I remember I remember getting those in the boxes and like yeah definitely through them. I didn't know what it was though. It's like yeah. an anthology book. I might pick one of those. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's the usual kind of like a hundred page giant type thing like that DC and Marvel used to do where it's like, you know, like, hey, here's you know like just a handful or like um annual style where it's like here's a bunch of like smaller yeah. stories okay. and stuff that kind of you know, sometimes they have like an overarching theme, sometimes it's just like, you know, here's this five five page story we didn't know where to put anywhere else. So we just kind of collected in here. So Right. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, no no shortage of, of cool stuff. So nice. Well, uh, what, is there any other comic updates that you know of? I mean, unfortunately, the Marvel thing and the Diamond were like the big the tells I had for the week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, honestly, like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of it. There's been a lot of, you know, like, back and forth of, um, you know, is this a time in which comics should go digital? Um, and also just kind of exposing. Um, the other day, there was a, a two-hour uh, interview. Um, I forget who hosted it, uh, but... It was a uh, basically kind of like a, an unscripted dialogue with uh, Steve Jeppy, who is the the owner of of Diamonds. Diamond, yeah, yeah, it's I like saw under that. under the umbrella of uh, Jeppy Enterprises, um, Alliance uh, Distribution for like uh, board games and card games. Like they're another part of it too. So like they run a lot of uh, the distribution market. Uh, okay. And there was they had a discussion with him about you know like hey what's what happens here you know like it was, it was interesting too because there's a lot of like the the history of um diamond comics and like the way in which we got to where we are now which is kind of a um the term was a a benign monopoly because as far as comic book distribution goes uh it's basically just kind of diamond comics for the entirety of uh north america right so it's, you know if you want comic books um chances are you're ordering through diamonds you know like 99 percent of the time like you could have usually like direct lines with marvel or dc um and that's the way it used to be but diamond kind of is the umbrella that you know joins you know all of the uh they call them like the premier publishers like marvel dc dark horse uh image and then you know a bunch of like the smaller indie ones who for the most part like would have a harder time uh, distribute, uh, you know, distributing because they're so small or people don't necessarily know of them or, uh, you know, it would be harder to just to kind of like get the eyes on their products, but, you know, right. Diamond kind of puts it all under one umbrella. Um, but it does kind of create this, this one point of failure and, you know, which is what we're kind of, exactly yeah, like one thing kind of came around and, you know, pulled the rug out from everything. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, here we are. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how, what happens when we've only got one way to you know <laughs> get comics going and uh not only that but like the amount of like layoffs that they've had kind of showed that they were you know almost like living invoice to invoice themselves like you know the second like that money started, yeah, right. that stopped coming in for them like they had to you know kind of immediately put a halt on everything so it's, it's it really kind of exposed a lot of the the you know faults that were in the system but I don't know. It's a matter of, you know, will things change after this? So we'll, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I know there's pros and cons to it. So that, and um, uh, like I said, part of the, um, the conversation too was like, um, should digital comics continue? Like, you know, like sure the, the, the physical comics can't, you know, hit the shelves, but you know, like most physical comics that come out these days, whether from Marvel or DC usually have within them like a digital code um, that you can use to kind of like redeem as a way to have like, you know, much like a lot of uh, uh, Blu-ray, you know, and like uh, DVDs like come out today, like they have like 
the physical yeah. copy itself and like hey here's a way in which you can kind of like add it to your digital collection so it's like it's a proof of purchase that lets you get um a digital version um people were kind of wondering well will they just kind of continue with that like will sure like if a comic was supposed to come out um this this wednesday can't physically come out in stores like can it still come out as you know the digital version like does that stuff have to halt too so it's it's shown that like the physical comics are still kind of you know rightfully so because you know it keeps stores like us in business and like a lot of people just generally prefer physical comics but yeah it's kind of shown that like you know if physical comics stop like all comics stop so yeah i don't know i to go all digital or to like be releasing digitally right now i, I think it's too soon i like come on it's only been a couple weeks i mean i know it feels excruciating but like yeah, yeah, gosh, that was that was definitely one of the things too. Is I was uh, talking with coworkers of like just trying to like trace back like how long it's been, and it, it feels like you know like six weeks, but you know it's only been like two or three. But right, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the digital because I'm always going to be a physical guy. So it's yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is a a kind of subjective preference thing, but you know, it's it's also kind of shown like you know, like I said, like how how much it's reliant on this stuff to kind of go off without a hitch. And like the second that there's any kind of, you know, problems, it's like, it all just kind of comes to a screeching halt. So. Yeah. They're, Marvel and DC are definitely going to have to like reevaluate how they do this after this. I mean, that's for sure. A lot of people are. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this definitely feels like a, a, you know, big historic event in, in the comic book um, industry. Um, and it's interesting to see if, <laughs> if any lessons will be learned or if, you know, like, uh, like we said, you know, like May 20th kind of rolls around and it's like, all right, well, you know, systems back up. We're just kind of hopping back on, on the cycle of, of, you know, like living from, from Wednesday to Wednesday. So. Yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else uh, on your mind comic related? No, not really. That was kind of it. Uh, I, although you said um, we, we kind of touched on it yesterday um, uh, after the, the Watchmen uh, we had talked about um any thoughts on the change of comic date? Uh, do you mean like uh, Wednesdays as the comic day? Is that a question from somebody? Uh, yeah, release dates. Yeah, like that's one of the things too is people have talked about, um, especially if you went through the the secondary like DC distribution methods. Um, yeah. They kind of even stated um, that you don't have to wait till Wednesdays. Like basically like it, once you get the books, like in theory, like that's like, that's new comic book day for you. Um, Cause oh, really? you, uh, yeah. So like oh. a little like behind the scenes, um, if you don't really know, like when we order comics, you know, new, new comic book days are usually Wednesdays. Um, uh, and we usually get them on Tuesdays. So the day before uh, a lot of that is mostly because, um, you know, they don't want people to break street date or, you know, like people to like, you know, like, scan the comic books and like you know like basically like for piracy purposes or like posting them online you know, like they kind of want stores to get them you know kind of as close to the actual release date as they can um yeah. and i'd be really bummed out if they change that I, I, again like the spirit of comic books is you go on wednesday and you get your books it's been <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Way i mean the, yeah there's definitely something very kind of uh, uh almost meditative and like a you know like a nice weekly ritual of it of you know like all right yeah. it's wednesday you know new comics come in i'll stop on buy and check um, and a lot of our, a lot of our subscribers, you know, like I'd say like, you know, 70% of them are people who, you know, they come in on those Wednesdays. Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Cause you know, it's very much like a, a part of their routine. Um, and the idea now is, um, especially when these people got their comics, uh, it was basically like, all right, well, if you get it on Monday, you know, you could put them, you either sell them online or there are some certain stories that, you know, can either have people in it, you know, cause this is, you know, a nationwide thing. So depending on, Right. Um, like um in the region like some people are able to like still have people in their stores or do curbside so it's basically like hey once you get these you know, like however you distribute them you know like you could you could sell them off to customers so uh it does bring the question of you know does wednesday still have to exist as new comic book day or is it basically going to be like if we do reach new distribution methods it's just kind of almost like a free-for-all of whenever you get them you know like however fast you could you know sell right. them you know like that's that's up to you guys so um, well, if they go through different distributors, I think it's going to be up to everybody. That's what I would guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so it's interesting kind of the standards that it's going to set or, or if it's just going to kind of come down to, you know, to, uh, you know store to store, like when you're actually able to, to deal with that. So, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But uh, 
as I was saying um, the other day, we were talking again about uh, the Watchmen, and you mentioned that. Um, so when we first read it uh, two weeks ago, or having it due by two weeks ago, we put our, our homework on the teacher's desk. Uh, you had mentioned uh, that you hadn't read uh, or you hadn't seen the actual Watchmen movie at that point. Um, right. But you you watched it like I think it was like the following day or a couple of days later. So, yeah, I think it was the next night I, I got a chance to sit and watch it. Um, I liked it. I thought it was good. I definitely liked how much uh, was shot for shot from the comic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but man, that ending, they changed it. I'm not going to spoil it in case anybody watching hasn't seen it, but like, yeah, I knew going was... into it, they changed Like, that's not a spoiler at this point. Like, they. Yeah. They oh, yeah. Like, that's. And man, after reading it, like, I'm so. You know what? I am so proud of myself for going 30 years without seeing that movie <laughs> or reading it and then doing it proper order because like it made a it made everything make more sense having read the yeah. book first, and be like man like knowing what the proper ending is like it's just it's more impactful so I, i'm really happy i read the book first yeah yeah I, I definitely remember um when it first came out in theaters and like people were watching it like a lot of yeah like the, the discussion was about the ending and like i get why they would change it you know like it, it seems like uh <laughs> especially with the amount of screen time they would have to like devote to like the whole like uh you know, stuff that was going on in you know with the with the, with the octopus uh, right uh, right like it's there's and also like i was i was thinking like would the average audience like follow that because like uh we talked about it too in our, our review like that's definitely one of the sections where like you know you re remember that you're reading a comic book like that's where it gets like not necessarily like supernaturally but kind right. of you know we're talking about you know like, putting the brains of psychics you know in, yeah <laughs> like, like outside of dr manhattan that's the most like um, yeah exactly yeah so like I would say, yeah. So yeah, the amount of time that they would then have to like um, dedicate to like uh, going over that again with like um, with audiences, like I feel like that might be a bit of a put off, but I don't know. I think it was it was definitely like one of the unique parts and and made for an interesting ending. Um, so when they did change that, like I definitely understood why they did it. Um, although I definitely still prefer the original, but um, but you said that otherwise you you enjoyed uh, the movie. Oh yeah, I yeah I would recommend it. Um, yeah, but like I said, I, I would really say read the book first. Don't just go. Yeah, go yeah, definitely. Book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, because you know it's a movie, so they, and it's a long, it's a long book, so they couldn't fit everything into. Oh yeah, the definitely. Yeah, like I said, they 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 combine scenes in some ways, basically like dialogues and and um discussions that happen like in in one part of the book. You know, was kind of like mashed together with another one to just you know kind of get like whatever the the meat like the main point of that one was like uh right. to just people have them understand that without like spreading the movie out more because uh, i think like i said like it was like a two-hour movie oh it's a little longer I, actually yeah. I, I think it was 242 because yeah. i had it on digital yeah i think it was it's long i mean they they stretch out that runtime with all the slow-mo fight scenes that happened like that was for me that was one of the things too was uh, uh you know obviously now like in a lot of ways like the gold standard for conflict movies are like the marvel movies um yeah. so it is interesting because that one came out in like 2009 so that was kind of what was that that was like iron man one or like um captain america ish like because like that was at the start ish you're right yeah of, that's of right. marvel that's kind of taking off and you know kind of setting like what the standard of of um, a comic book movie is like you know how much time they dedicate to like pushing the plot like how much they deal with like action um so like seeing the um uh when they get to that point uh in like in the movies like it's interesting to see how like how they they were dealing with it and I feel like a lot of the answer for like <laughs> the combat scenes was like put everything slow motion, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because most of them were just human, so you got to make it look a little special. Also, exactly, yeah, they they make it more dynamic uh, through stuff like that. Um, yeah, but but yeah, like it was it was still a solid movie. Um, like I said, a lot of it was <laughs> a lot of time was spent on the uh, the soundtrack. It felt like um, to make it seem like uh, more of like a period piece. Like you could definitely yeah. like, with the amount of like licensed songs that they had, including like. Um, uh, the Bob Dylan song at the at that intro part too, right? Which is cool because that was in the book. But um, yeah, but you're yeah. right. That was definitely like a heavy soundtrack. If you got that soundtrack, it's a lot of popular known songs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was fun. It was interesting. Um, I I ended up like not liking it as much as when I first saw it in theaters. But maybe like I said, I think part of that might have been like you know we're used to like what the pacing of of a marvel like uh superhero movie ends up being and it, it definitely felt a little bit slower um but not that that's necessarily like a bad thing because you know much like the book itself like it's not about like action popping off like it's it's more of um 
you know, it's it's almost like the, the divide between like Star Wars and Star Trek, like whereas Star Trek is usually a lot slower and more about like, you know, philosophy and like whatever kind of uh, social commentary they're trying to make versus a lot more of like the kind of action fantasy type stuff of like a Star Wars. So that's actually a really good analogy. So, oh, so yeah, like I, I definitely, I definitely enjoyed it for, for what it was and, you know, like I'm being a little bit dated, you know, like the question of if they, if the first Watchmen movie like ever came out and like, if it was like, you know, this year, like it would definitely look a lot different. Um, but yeah. I still enjoyed it for what it was. And also like the casting, like, I feel like, uh, especially with like Nightwing, I think that he was probably the most like aptly cast or like he definitely kind of, uh, embodied that like very like milk toast and kind of timid, um, you know, in, in the comic books like, or in like the panels, like he, every panel of him, he looked like very like apprehensive and, and kind of scared. And, wait, wait, um, this character, you said Nightwing. Night, uh, <laughs> did you say, did sorry, you say Night, Owl? Night, Night Owl, yeah. yeah uh, Night, okay. Night something. Um, but yeah, uh, I forget I forget the actor's name, but uh, he was in like um, uh, Haunting in Connecticut and uh, the Annabelle series. Uh-huh. Um, his name's skipping right now, but uh, I feel like he was definitely aptly cast. And same with... Um, well, I guess I feel like I was kind of on the fence again, like because um, Rorschach I really liked in the movie, um, but yeah. kind of hearing, I don't know. For me, it was like in the in the comics, uh, they describe him as like very monotone and like um, the way in which he talks, like definitely feels very dry. Whereas um, uh, in the movies, like I feel like they kind of went more of like the here's like a gravelly kind of like almost like pseudo tough guy voice. Uh, it's very much like the Christian Bale, like when he's talking as Batman, it's just like, you know, he just like makes his voice sound deeper. And like, I I, I feel like, I don't know if that's necessarily how we would picture Rorschach talking. Like it's, I feel like it's just talking normally, but just in a very like stilted and like monotone like pattern. But like in this one, they definitely made him try to sound like a lot more intim- intimidating, but. Yeah. I, uh, I felt the same way about Dr. Manhattan, actually. He sounded... It wasn't the voice I heard in my head. When I was <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna say it. Yeah, it was. He was really like soft and kind, and I kind of, I kind of like that though. Like it, it's, it's a good, um, you know, uh, almost like a benevolence to his voice, which I feel is is kind of fitting. But yeah, well, I don't know. I when I was reading it, I thought he was just like cold and like com- like robotic. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it was a good movie. I, uh, I'd give it a, a eight out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up on the it, big board, yeah. It would well, ten out of ten for the comic, eight out of ten. If, if they, yeah, if they didn't change the end, it would have gotten nine out of ten. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, and then we still have um, at some point to maybe uh, catch up on uh, the HBO series. Um, I've still got that that kind of like ready and waiting to to take a look at. Because um, like I yeah, said, to my knowledge, that takes place like a few years after um, the events, uh, but also it follows the. Um, uh, you know the comics ending so like that's that's kind of where they're going with it so yeah since you and i talked about that uh somebody else whose opinion i trust really recommended that show so i'll definitely check it out and there we go we get another uh, hbo series is amazing apparently so we'll, we'll definitely have to take a look at that so absolutely i'm down uh so did you want to confirm next week's book uh, yeah, yeah. So last um, yesterday at the end of our, our book report on uh, Batman Year One, we were kind of discussing what we're going to read for this next week. Um, and we were we had kind of landed on uh, Marvel's The Infinity Gauntlet Saga, including like um, uh, Thanos Quest and, and some of like the kind of side stories around that. So uh, I feel like that's a, that's a good choice because it's another kind of huge like uh, series defining uh you know, story arc, uh, obviously, especially with all the, the Marvel movies that came out, like the Infinity War, um, yeah. Infinity Gauntlet stuff. Uh, so yeah, getting able to like reread that would be pretty neat, so. Do you wanna, should we just start with the Thanos Quest uh, series? Do you wanna just start with that or do you wanna yeah, do that? Um, I mean, that's that's just like two issues. Um, I, but then again, obviously like the, the Infinity Gauntlet itself is like, kind of, what is it, like six to 10 or something like that, so. Six, uh, and then there's, uh, I don't know if you, if we're doing all the tie-ins, then there's like 30, 40 books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like because uh, I know we've got um in one of these boxes here of stuff that we were looking at. Yeah, like we've got a lot of the like Infinity Gauntlet, the Sur- Silver Surfers. Um, yeah, we got the Infinity Gauntlet. So um, what I was then... trying to do there is I uh, I looked up all the contents from the Omnibus and was trying to build the Omnibus out of single issues, essentially. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because like you said, like those Silver Surfers are tie-ins, um, and then like obviously after the Infinity Gauntlet stuff, there's like the Infinity Crusade. Um, and right. I don't think I've read much of the stuff that followed it. Um, like I, I never knew or never followed like the Infinity Crusade and the ones after that. But like uh, the lead-ups, like uh, Silver Surfer and um, uh, Thanos Quest, were definitely some of my favorites, just because. In a lot of ways that was like my first exposure to some of these characters like a lot of the like cosmic level uh, marvel like either superheroes or villains like all the different like cosmic entities um it was definitely like uh really interesting to see that too so all right then uh yeah let's do it i'm down right, so we'll say i uh, thanos quest and the entirety of uh, the infinity gauntlet or just do you want to do like thanos quest and that kind of early stuff first I think we should break it apart. I think we should do Thanos Quest first. Just because okay. I feel like the six issues are going to deserve their own time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, and yeah. I feel like there's enough stuff beforehand uh, that we could, you know, we'll have stuff to talk about, obviously. Yeah, maybe we should each do our own, like, um, read what we want to that would come between Thanos Quest and the Gauntlet, and then we can, like, bounce our findings off each other. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I'm sure extra credit, like, at the end of all this, we might be uh, re-watching the... Um, yeah, as, as pointed out by John there, uh, Silver Surfer 34 and 35 were kind of uh, the tie-ins that, that led up to that. So uh, we'll, we'll come across copies of that. Um, I want to say at the store, we should have trade paperbacks that are just called, I think, the Thanos Quest that I do believe um, add the um, uh, the Silver Surfer issues in there. So like well, I said, well, I'll come across story. those and then we we'll have, have those. Oh, sorry, go on. My bad. Oh, no, I was going to say, like, um, those ones um, we'll definitely add in as, um, you know, if you want to shoot me an email, uh, message us on Facebook, Discord, um, comics at pastimes.net. Uh, I'll be able to, you know, if you're interested in grabbing one of those two, we could ship it out. Or like I said, um, keep an eye on the website uh, because if when we get more information on curbside pickup, that would be another option too is, you know, swing on by the store and uh, we'll be able to, you know, get you the book so you can follow along at home too, so. Uh, yeah, we have four or five copies of the Epic Collection Thanos Quest, so it has all the Silver Surfer issues plus the two. Uh, if you want to, if you want to uh, hold the fort here for a second, I could run over there and take a look and uh, see where they are. Oh yeah, go ahead and grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you are interested in reading the Gauntlet series, uh, I think the tie-ins are necessary and the Omnibus right now is out of print, but it's it's supposed to come in back into print in September, but that's going to get changed with all the dates moving up. So uh, look for that omnibus reprint sometime later in 2020 or early 2021. But in the meantime, this epic collection that he's going to grab right now uh, is really great supplemental material. Uh, it has, it's a straight shot of all the Silver Surfer issues. I want to say it's like, we're going to see how good I am. I think it's like 34 through 44 are in that book, or maybe a little bit more, 34 through 50. And then the two Thanos quest books that we're going to be reading. So um, yeah, the Epic collections are a great way to fill in your collection and get all of those tie-in issues because they give you a straight run of whatever title they're collecting. Uh, so if you've never gotten an epic collection but you're trying to get in on this book club this might be a really good one to start with and i know we have multiple copies of it so i'm sure we could get it out to you and uh yeah that's what i got to tell you about that and i think he's right that after we read this we should go back and watch infinity war and uh avengers endgame to compare the two because i know they took a lot of stuff directly from the books. Like they were pretty true to it. They also had their own twists, but they also didn't have all the characters. Like I do know for a fact that they had to swap out Silver Surfer and Hulk in one of the scenes. So it'd be cool to, to see the original. No, nope, uh, we don't. I, I lied. I, I'd, I'd have to check our inventory. I, I might've put it uh, elsewhere, but um, I know we should have some uh, still around. I did come across okay. though um the the uh infinity gauntlet book that we have that's um oh that's solid. yeah that this yeah. this one is just the um one through six yeah one issues one through six yeah um, Next um week. But, yeah yeah for uh for the following week we'll definitely follow up on that but yeah we've got um a lot of the the physical issues of silver surfer and the infinity gauntlet too so if you if you do get, 
if you do care more about the um you know the, the individual issues to, to you know pad out your collection to we've got that but um usually whenever we're reading it we're usually reading um uh the collected editions and stuff like that so right i do know that we have one set of single issues of gauntlet one through six complete so yeah. that's something we can throw up uh for sale at some point uh, yeah Oh, I don't see it right here, but um, issue okay. number four, that is that is definitely one of my favorites. Um, it's the uh, the come and get me uh, uh, Thanos oh, cover. That's him on the cover. That's, that's definitely that's definitely like a, a top five uh, comic book cover for me. So I've, I've got one of those at home. Uh, again, like, right. as far as my collection, it's not like it's not money books, but it's just books that <laughs> always make me laugh when I see them. So, yeah, no, that's a good one. That's a solid cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll definitely um, like I said, uh, it's going to be Silver Surfer 34 and 35 and Thanos Quest as uh, next week's homework. So we'll I'll, I'll put that we'll put that um, up on the Facebook and then also um, on the Discord is where um, we have a channel for uh, specifically, you know, all things comic related. But then also we've got we've got a sub one for um, uh, the book, the book club stuff. So I've been like kind of like marking on there what we've been reading and then also um you know like here are like basically like the due dates if you want to call them like you know like here's the books that we're gonna be reading between like these these sets of dates so I'll, I'll update it with the um uh with this stuff so nice cool well thank you for doing that yep um Stop. and yeah i think that's that's kind of it for uh this week um you know yeah. like i said like a lot of the news has kind of been slower for comic stuff and mostly uh you know there's just a few big stories but then you know like anything that kind of comes out is more just like updates on it basically you know like for example obviously diamond closed and it's just kind of been the back and forth of hey we don't really know what's going on versus you know like all right here's kind of like the the dates that they're kind of shooting for and for now it seems like we do have kind of a finalized date of um may 20th as like what they're shooting for to hopefully get back on schedule with comics so yeah well, i'm looking forward to it man um but yeah, thanks. I'd say thanks for uh, coming on out. Um, as always, uh, facebook.com slash pastimes. Um, we have these also going on on our Twitch page. Uh, so twitch.tv slash uh, pastimes online, uh, if you want to follow on there. Um, and then also on our Facebook page, we have a link to the Discord server. To my knowledge, there's no easy like, uh, you know, way to, to, you know, do a slash for you. But we do have the, um, uh, the, invite link that you can click on so that way whether you're on on your computer or on your phone you're able to join through that um, you just download the app and we've got the whole server there set up for all things you know like uh, we've got all of our magic stuff there we've got comic books we've got board game stuff um, we got a bunch of voice channels um, we've also been doing a lot of our rpg stuff on there so if you care about uh stuff like dnd we've got our dnd adventures league on there we um uh we post like the dates that we're able to play um i'm part of that so like we, we always hop on and use like stuff like discord as a voice chat. So um, it's been, you know, a fun way to kind of keep up with that stuff since we can't, you know, physically meet up at the store on a weekly date to, you know, play D and D, but you know, it gets yeah. the job done. So definitely. Yeah. yeah but nothing for sure. Uh, but yeah, I just, um, so as far as Johnny and I, we will be on um, again next Tuesday and Wednesday um, okay. later on in the week, I believe tomorrow our uh, Royce will be on um, opening up Pokemon packs. Uh, I believe there's a new set that's that's coming out or came out that she's going to be um, opening up. Uh, so like last time, you know, like we're going to be cracking open packs and anything that, you know, you see on there will also be for sale on our site um, or you can message for us too when that comes out. And then I believe later in the week too, we're going to be uh, starting similar, but with uh, magic cards. So that would be exciting. Of, yeah, everybody should to, check out. Yeah, keep an eye out for oh. on, on, on the site. So, um, so yeah, thanks for coming on out and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next week then. Sounds good. Later. All right. Are we clear? I don't.